Tight Riders. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode two of HTR Build It Power Tower. Um, firstly, I'd like to say a massive thank you for everyone who's watched and commented on episode one. It's really amazing to see that you're all enjoying it. And uh, we're going to go straight into it today with episode two. We're going to be building the actual uh, gondola with the cars on it and all the seats. Um, definitely one of the more fiddly parts of the model, but very rewarding if you can stick through it. So uh, sit back and enjoy. So now is the time to move on to something slightly more exciting. So uh, the first thing we need to do is add the steps and the walkway onto the outrigger. Um, which eventually will form part of the queue line. So we're looking for sprue number two, uh, which I imagine is grey or black. Best thing to do is look at a picture on the, the picture on the box of the completed model, so you can kind of tell what colour you're looking for. Um, Fala did actually make two versions of this power tower. Um, I think this is the later one, the earlier one. It was pretty much the same model, but it was different colours, so you, you might end up with one with different colours. Uh, so I'm looking for, here it is, right in front of me. So this is number two, that's the one I need. Just going to prop the instructions up in the background. There we go. It's always hard to find what you're looking for. So we want piece number... 2.9, 2 2.10, 2 2.11. So 2.11 is this, which is the steps. Give them a cut. You bored yet? Obviously this is quite a long process. I've been building for six, seven, about two hours now. So you can tell it's not something you can just do in an evening. But if you are enjoying it, please do give it a thumbs up and leave us a comment. Because ultimately, if no one does enjoy it, I won't carry on filming them. Because it is a bit of a faff setting up all these cameras. And trying to keep track of what's going on. So, got those two there. Uh, we need 2.9 and 2.10 as well, which are little walkways, so that's these two. Pop them out, so 2.10 goes on the left, try and remember that. 2.9 goes on the right. The reason I'm doing that is because obviously I've cut the number off now, so don't know which one's which. Again, quick clean up with a knife, which isn't on the camera. I do apologize. Quick clean up with the knife. Like so. Oh, I've mixed them up now. So you got one here, like that. And the best thing to do is just go for it, I think. Or glue the outrigger itself. Because you're basically attaching to a sticker. And then hold it in place. I haven't actually glued it to the base. And that's just because obviously there's a sticker there and you don't really want to be gluing that. So do the same on the other side. Pop that on. Now I've used a bit too much glue on this side and you can see um, if you look closely, some overspilling glue, which is a pain. So try not to do what I just did. 
this side seems to fit much better. There's a little gap on this side, but again, don't worry, like you're gonna have fences all over this when you're done, so you probably won't notice. Um, there's literally so many fine details in this model. So the steps, what I did with the model I made before, is put one of them, one set's on the wrong way up. There is a right way and a wrong way, which I'm gonna try and work out now. Um, one of the ways basically the step will f sit um, flush. I believe that's the way we want it. Uh, let's try it the other way just in case. It is really hard to tell. Let's have a look on here. Right now I've got it. So you want the steps with. Can I get that to focus? I don't know if it's going to focus. You want the flat bit of the steps to be at the top to act as like a top step. Oh, the oven's beeping. And this is where the tweezers come in handy. So, kind of work out where it's going to go. Then give it a little bit of glue. Oh, too much. Put too much on there. You literally hardly need any glue. Just to give you an idea of the, the other model I made. I only used like half a bottle of glue for the entire model. Oh, make sure it's in the right place. It is fiddly. Ultimately, if you get this wrong, you just have to chop up the fences later on to make them all fit properly. Don't be afraid to push it down into the pool. Now, if you're doing a really good job, I passed a bake while I will arrive. Mm. Once you've finished eating your pasta bake and you feel suitably fat, you get back to work. So, are we all having fun? I um, hope so. Ah, right, so, you'll be glad to know. You can stop looking at this now and chuck it away, just to one side, because this next stage is, for me, I think the most exciting part of the build uh, is quite fiddly but building the gondola basically so as you can see from the instructions here it's a double spread of instructions so probably more detailed than what we've had so far um, what we need is yellow number 10 this one's easy to find it's got the big bits in it um, it's during this that you'll notice like just how small this thing is that you're building and you'll start like if you if you get it right you'll be there all smug and proud of yourself so when you cut this out make sure you don't cut off any of the actual seats uh, seat stubs as it were these should stay on just cut there Now, you get to this stage and you start getting all excited and really enthusiastic and think you start dreaming about building an entire miniature fun fair, which is really good. And then your girlfriend comes in and tells you to stop or she'll leave you so there we go if anyone does want to buy me the Fala Topspin or Wild Mouth 
I would be more than happy to receive it. Um, in fact, I will build it for you and then you can keep it afterwards. As long as you buy me another one after that. <laughs> cool, so there's the two bits. Um, can't remember where, oh yeah, there we go. So again, give them a clean up, same as normal. Not too bad really. So with this one, you basically put all these in the holes. So you'll see there's a load of holes in there. Should push in. But again, do a dry run before you do it for real. Perfect. That is perfect. So I'm gonna get this out of the way so I don't glue the instruction manual together. Um, I prefer putting glue on the actual um, dowels, should we call them dowels? Saves you putting glue in the wrong hole, it were. And then pop it in. There we go, make sure all of them are in. Look at that. Oh yeah, now we're talking. Uh, Give that a second or two. So that's part A of the page. So for part B, we need 10, 6. Now this is where stuff starts getting a little bit fiddly. So you've got to be careful when you cut this out that you don't break actual part because when you cut it tries to bend. I don't know whether you saw that. Have a, have a look at the part. Yeah. So as long as you're careful you'll be alright. So that's ten six, which is the one we need. Pop that out. Love this bit. I would make this bit all day if I could. Now, this is where you gotta be really clever. Oh, so you need two of those. So try not to miss anything out. Pop. Pop. And if you snap this one, it just becomes a bit of a pain in the butt. So you've got two of these, like that I think. So this doesn't really pop into a hole. You've got to get the side with a hole, with the gap. The gap kind of goes either side of the beam and it pushes down to kind of touch the frame. There's no hole for it to pop into. Just got to glue it in place. Hope for the best. Now, I am kind of rushing this without looking into it too much because that's just the way I am and I don't like to think things through too much because where's the fun in that? So apologies if you can't see what I'm doing when I put this in it's hard to hold the camera at the same time and there we go, so there's one As you can see, it's kind of just adding to the appearance of the frame. So you need one more of them on whichever side you've just used, do it on the opposite side. Because the other two are slightly different for the other two sides, which we'll come to in the next step. For the next one we need 1013, which is very similar. Uh, but they got a little kind of circular cutout in them. There's that. Now, what you need with these 
is to find. Oh, is that the wrong one? Got the wrong one there. 10, 13, 10, 5. Right, okay, so I lied. So one of them's got an indent, the other one doesn't. <coughs> Try to remember which one's which. Now, we need to go to our little plastic container, which you'll find in your bag of bits for this stage. Open that up. In here we've got two weights and a tiny little magnet. Now, ultimately, this is the magnet that activates the reed switch on the tower and tells the ride control box whereabouts the car is. So it'll, this is what ultimately makes the car stop at the top and the bottom of the tower. Um, <coughs> so make sure you remember to put it on. Um, and you do need to super glue this onto the part because it's not plastic. I don't think it matters which way up it goes. I'm just trying to work that out now. I don't think it's got a plus and a minus on it. No, nope, it seems to stick both ways. So we go back to our super glue, just a dab. Just a dab, there we go. Oh, it's running away. Try and get it in the right place. Something like that. And we'll give that a sec to dry because it's obviously super glue. Now the instructions at this point are not very clear, so it doesn't show them, it doesn't tell you you have to put this piece on to be honest, uh, but if you skip ahead a few steps there's a picture that shows it is on, um, so you just got to go for it really. Um, I'll just check, yeah. So it's the same thing again, get back to your plastic glue. Get a bit on there. Not too much, not too little. Get it just right. There we go. Boom. Obviously you've got to bear in mind that this piece is magnetic now and wants to go everywhere. Which is really annoying. The best thing to do is just go for it. There we go. Got one with the magnet one two and then you've got one left to go on the other side which i'll just do now so once you've given that a little bit of time to dry you can move on so again from part number 10 we want 10 9 10 8 What these are, are the pulley wheels. <laughs> these form the pulley on the actual uh, car itself that the thread goes around. So again, because it's going to be a moving part, try and get it a bit smoother. As a general rule, if anything circular, smooth it off. I think. There we go. Now, so the instructions for this, say, let's have a look, how are we going to do this? So it says, only apply glue at this point, points on the inside, so you don't want to glue the outside edge, just glue the middle basically. 
and I mean I can't really see what the issue would be if you did because it's not going to make contact but essentially they push together like that and form a little pulley so you don't want to glue in there because that's just going to get in the way of uh, your string running later on so I think what it's saying is that if you glue the middle just inside oh I'm using the wrong glue that was uh, dried up if you just glue in the middle then you won't have any like overspill to get in the way of the thread because the thread's like microscopic and really annoying um, and anything will get in the way of that stupid thread you'll come to hate the thread so yeah literally just push these on boom it's quite cute really it's like miniature miniature engineering there we go give them a couple of seconds to dry and whilst we're doing that we shall find part 10 7 which there are two of So it's another do not glue moment. So what you need is to pop, pop your little thing, this side facing you, not that side, side with the inner circle. That faces down, just push it on and it should should rotate, so you do the same for both. Like that, and then we go back to number 10, and these pieces fly everywhere. Tiny little, they look like Model T lights, or perhaps nipples. So be very careful when you're cutting the nipples. Oh, what did I tell you? One's just flown onto my lap. <coughs> So these are basically pins and you pop them in the hole on the top. Hopefully you can see this. Just pushes it and there you go. That's, that's your pin. That holds it in place. You don't need to glue that. This is sufficient enough as it is. It's very fiddly though. Oh. Might use the tweezers. Not sure whether that'll help there. There we go. Once you put them in, just check it still moves. Which, there we go, it does. So then you just gotta install these into place. So, on the back, again, the instructions are absolutely useless for this, so they don't tell you, but the back has got a little um, cutout. What's the word I'm looking for? Not extrusion the opposite anyway so that's on the back you want to put them find your magnet don't put it on the magnet side put it on the two sides uh, opposite each other without the magnet on and it should um, if you just kind of offer it um, offer it up so that pushes onto there and sits upside down like that Yeah, make sure it's this way up, not the other way up. Just checking with the one I've made before as to how I've done that. Yeah, that's fine. So, I'd say pop the glue in the indentation. And what I've just done there, I think, uh, just be really careful not to glue this stop shut because that's what I pretty much almost did then by accident so be careful get it on there it 
pushes up as far as it go. Again, the instructions are a bit rubbish, but such is life. Once it's in, check that your wheel still runs. If anything throughout your build stops running, it gets glue stuck, probably best to sort it out there and then, because trust me, it's not gonna be fun making it work at the end. So same again for the other one. Careful not to get the glue on the wheel that moves. Here we go, pop this one in. And by now you'll be an expert, so it'll be really easy, he says. Pull that off. There we go, sorted. So you should have a car that looks like this. You've got your two pulley wheels, opposite sides. You've got your magnet on that side. And this is where the real fun starts because basically you've got to construct all the cro cross sections yourself. So we've got a load of 10, 12 parts, which are all of these, literally just little sticks basically. Got to cut them out. So I'm going to go for that. We need four, I believe. One, two, three, four. <laughs> so believe it or not, this is a part. <laughs> it's where it all starts to get fun. So the end with the hole in, there's a little, little knobble on the end. Again, the focusing is not ideal here. But that knobble goes into one of the holes on the base, like so. So essentially it's going to end up looking like that. Why is it not focusing? Imagine it's focused. Um, you got to do that four times, so here we go. So, same again for parts 10 and 11, it's very similar. Um, but these ones are slightly shorter and they go on the edges of each straight um, try not to get them mixed up because they look very similar So once you completed that, you will see we've got our framework kind of complete. There we go. Now we move on to the dreaded 2 bag two. Now this is full of the smallest little pieces you've ever seen in your life. And you will learn to hate these very quickly. So once again, I'm going to t tip all these into the Chinese takeaway tub. Now this next stage is basically attaching the <coughs> running wheels to the actual uh, gondola itself. Uh, so 
you have eight wheels, four on the top of the car, four on the bottom. Um, and we've got to assemble them all basically and glue them all on one at a time. Here goes. So we need eight wheel bits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now these are tiny, tiny. And then eight little ring donuts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Now, you might not be able to see them because they're really, really tiny. Here is how big one of the wheel, <laughs> wheel hubs is. It's crazy. So basically you've just got to put the um, the tyres, as it were, onto the wheel. Just push them on. It's fairly simple, he says. I lied. It's not simple at all. So you end up with like this, where's my finger there, there it is. You end up with this little like donut-y thing. Do that eight times, and if I were you, put them back into the box. <laughs> Doesn't look like I'm doing anything, does it? There we go. You've got eight of them. And then we want nine five. So we need to go back to the other one. Now, with this, you might not be able to tell, but there's five here which are different to these four. So those four there are very slightly longer. Um, we've got to try and not mix them up because ultimately it will decide whether <laughs> whether the uh, the cart or the, the car actually fits on the tower. So keep these separate when you take them off. So nine, five are the smaller ones and that's what we want first. We want eight of them. So we've got one, oops. Two, three, four, five. There's five of them. I've dropped one though. Need another three. I've got. Oop. Got one, two. Now I need to try and find another one in the box because there weren't any on the sprues. Just got to keep your fingers crossed that there are some in here. Yep. How many do I need? One, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just one. Which is fine because I can see one here. Essentially, you got to push the pin through and trap the wheel inside. Pop the wheel in first, maybe. Try and get it in the right kind of place. And then push that. Push it through like so. And there's one. Just uh, discovered after doing a few of them, 
because if you hold it like top and bottom, you can just about hold the wheel at the same time, which makes things easy. And then pop it through with the other hand. But this is really fiddly. And I would recommend doing it in a well lit area, hence the millions of lamps that I've got in here at the moment. So once you've got your eight, you need to then get your cutters. The instruction, again, are rubbish. The instructions just say separate, but essentially what you gotta do is get your side cutters, pop it there and just snip off the excess. Uh, believe it or not, none of this is glued. It just pushes in and supposedly it doesn't fall out. Um, it ha none of them have fallen out on the one I've made already, so perhaps it's right. You've got to be careful because these ends do fly everywhere at high speed. So there's one. Two. Three. You can just hear the bits flying off. Try not to blind yourself whilst you do this or cut your finger off I don't know where they're going if you have a pet cat and it starts choking and bleeding from the throat it's probably because it's eaten one of these but oh well it saves you the vet bills in it so there we go that's eight of them Look quite nice actually. That should run again. All of them should run. You shouldn't have glued anything in this section. So you've got eight of them, and then essentially you've got to do exactly the same thing again, uh, but using the slightly bigger ones. Um, I think the small ones go on. Well, I, I think the small ones go on the top and the big ones on the bottom because they're mounted further away basically. So. Yeah, so I'm going to do that. I'll speed you up so you don't have to endure that again. And so there we have it, we've got eight little ones, eight slightly bigger ones. Um, like I said, try and keep them separate because there is hardly any difference in size. You can't really tell the difference, so small ones, big ones. Now, So the small ones go on the top and the big ones go on the bottom, which I think is what I guessed earlier on. Who knows? They should just slot in uh, to these little holes, like so, like that, and glue them in place. So I'm just going to do that now.
there we go, part one complete, that's the top one, the little one. Then you flip it over and do the same for the bigger ones. And there we have it. So you've got your wheels on the top and on the bottom. And they should run if you run your finger over them. Um, that one doesn't seem to want to move. It's not the end of the world if they don't run that freely because these just kind of run up and down the tower. They don't make much contact. Right, so there's that. Before you finish with this bit though, you've got to keep it upside down and back inside the little tub that the magnet was in there's these two things and these are just weights basically these need to be super glued to the bottom of the car and because uh, because their car's so light without them basically it wouldn't drop properly if you didn't put them on so make sure you get these on um super glue these ones Yeah, so you just super glue the two weights on. I've put them on the opposite sides, but not the ones with the pulleys on. Uh, just because that's what the picture in the book shows. I don't know whether it really makes much odds. Mm, probably not. Uh, but there we go. Right then, next up is the cars. So we've got to add the seats now. Um, you've got a black pre-molded seat um, and then you've got the yellow harnesses. So I'll just get these out now. Eight, one and eight, five. Yep, that's right. Every single seat is individual. Um, the harnesses are in groups of four. But So we'll start with the seats, just pop all, pop all of them out. We need, how many seats are there on this? Quite a lot. Four, eight, nine, 16. Two seats there, good. Uh, so, cut these out first. So the bottom of the seat has got two tiny little holes and they have to sit on the two holes on each of these steps. So it does take a while. I'll do one and then speed it up for you. They 
Should go on there. these things it's like finding the technique something I've not managed to do yet with it really difficult. have it we've got all of the seats on and that was really a lot more hassle than I remember it being and as you could probably tell by my voice it's getting to that time of night where colds get worse and feeling all ill groggy so please send me some sympathy oh so I'm just gonna work on the harnesses now and I think once we finish the, the gondola, we'll call it a night. Um, it's now quarter to ten, so what have we done? We've built since six, was it? About four hours of building. Which isn't too bad, I suppose. Got something to show for it. Ooh. 
how many of these do I need? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's two, three, four, five. Three, six. Then you only get one, one spare set of harnesses. basically with the harnesses let's have a look on this camera you should be able to just oh he says I'll use the tweezers to put it on I thought this was going to be easy but it's not let's try it on this one So it basically just rests in a little gap, but you glue it on obviously, so let's get glue in. harnesses are glued in place so you can't open or close them. You could, if you wanted to at this stage, add in some people figures into the cars. Come on. But bear in mind if you add people to it, you're adding weight and you want to make sure you add it evenly. So it doesn't affect the performance. Theoretically, you could glue some harnesses open if you like. But if you use it as a running model, it's probably look a bit stupid. There's a quick look at that one. And now we just need to add like this little canopy kind of thing to the top of the car. So to do that, we need eight of these tiny little Y sections. These remind me of the game operation for some reason. We used to have to fish out people's bones and stuff without the buzzer going off good game one two three four five six seven again eight again you should you could even tidy these up with a knife because they're so small and hidden i don't think i'm gonna bother uh, let's just work out where they go first. So, you've got two bits on the end. If you look, look down here, I don't know whether you can see, there are actually two holes either side, so you've basically got to shove them in there. Which is not the easiest thing in the world. I don't think. But we will try. That seems to have gone in alright. It's not too bad. It's 
it's all about hope. Just hoping that it'll go in. Never really knew what this kind of P was for on the real ride. Unless it's just a, unless they did use it for access when building up and inspections. I mean, it does, it does make the, the gondola look a lot better. As you'll see shortly. So we now have eight little umbrella stalks, if you will. Just need to find my cutters, which I've misplaced. They're literally right here. I'm getting tired now. So just cut out the canopy. Is there an up and down? I think that's going to go up because it looks better. One side looks very slightly better. Quite similar. So we'll just try it for... Oh, this is going to be a pain in the bum. So it light up. Could tell already. But oh well. Let's clean that up. Doo -doo -doo. Yep. Like so. Which side? Uh, that'll be the top. So I'm just gonna dab some glue on these. Put way too much on. Oh well. Now we'll put this on top, which is sure to be difficult. Where would we be without tweezers, eh? Oh. See that there? Uh, you won't want to give it a, a little push down to make sure it's stuck on every one. And there we have it. Let's have a quick look around there. That's about right. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We've got our gondola. That's nice, isn't it? So I think what we're going to do here, because I'm so tired, I can't speak anymore. I'm going to call it a night. So that's four hours worth of building time. We've got ourselves a nice base. Um, and the gondola, which can pop there. So obviously you've seen it against my hands, but here it is next to a Lego man. <laughs> so yeah, it's a tiny stuff. Anyway. That's all we've got time for in episode two. Join us next week when we start building the actual tower itself. Just let us know below what you thought and be sure to subscribe for more. See you later.